2%, hitting a one-month low as economic data out of China revealed manufacturing activity in May slowed. Historically, Australia and New Zealand are at loggerheads on the sporting field, but can they get together and work as one in the very competitive area of accounting? There is a proposal on the table for the Institute of Chartered Accountants in both countries to become one. So why is this being considered? For more, I'm joined by Tim Gulliver, the President of the Institute of Chartered Accountants. Thanks for joining us, uh, Tim. Thank you very much, Peter. So, to be here. so why are we trying to get so close to our Kiwi cousins, mate, in the accounting area? Well, we're in the, in the middle of a, um, uh, a consultation phase with our, our members because globally uh, the accounting profession has been under threat a bit with the member bodies around the world or looking to come to Australia. So we're looking to reinforce our member needs here across the Tasman. OK, but you, know, you guys are strong in your own, your own patch. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, in New Zealand, like CPAs don't even uh, rate a mention. Do they? The Institute's about basically the only real organisation over there for accountants. Is that right? That's correct. They have 30,000 members uh, in New Zealand with a population of about 3.5 million. Hmm. And we have 60,000 members here in Australia with a lot larger uh, population, which is, um, there are other member bodies around, so uh, it's about focusing on becoming a member-centric organisation because our members now are in commerce, public sector, academia and public practice. So they have quite a diverse role in the business community today. OK, well tell us, you know, obviously when you sat down and, and did the pitch both to the Kiwis and also to your members, you must have listed the, the obvious advantages. So what are they? Well, it's about being uh, more relevant in the, in the, and have a stronger voice in the Trans-Tasman community. Uh, this year celebrates the 30th year of the uh, a closer economic relationships with, with, the, with, the, with the New Zealand government and the Australian government. So having worked uh, with businesses across the Tasman and having accountants working across the Tasman has been a natural trans, trans, transition to enable the business communities to, that, that we all service mm. to have one global uh, chartered accounting designation being consistent in this region. OK, so thinking through some of the key issues that you would care about, one is, of course, the kind of tax laws and, and company laws that your, your accountants have to operate under. How similar are they between Australia and New Zealand? They're very similar. And as you would be aware, the uh, global accounting standards that have been rolling through uh, the global uh, world of chartered accountants and the, and the member bodies globally have become uh, quite you know, user friendly and very common across the region down here as well. Mm. And the, our education platform is very similar with the New Zealanders and the Australians now undertake exactly the same CA program as the education platform. Yeah. Well, I'm also thinking the rivalry between Aussies and Kiwis as such, who's going to run the show? Well, it's a new institute. So we'll have a combined board and a combined council and it'll be made up of representatives not only from Australia, but representatives from New Zealand and also between us we have 12,500 members offshore. So we're mindful of what our membership needs are in the Asian region and also our members in the UK and the US of A. Yeah. So Tim. it'll be a combined joint effort from, uh, from all over the world of, of bringing that talent to our board. Tim, is it going to happen? Well, we hope so. We're in the middle of consultation at the moment. We're having uh, all of June and May to socialise the concept with our members and to get their feedback. And if we get their feedback, sorry, I just lost this. Okay. If they get their feedback to proceed to vote, then we'll be asking our members to vote on it on 1, July, 1 October okay. to 1 November. Well, mate, you, you know, you're in Melbourne. You know South Australians always worry about Victorians and Victorians always worry about... New South Welshmen and Queensland's always worried about New, New South Welshmen and anyone else in the world. Obviously Kiwis often worry about us being the big pushy brother. Is that going to be one of the obstacles you're going to have to get over? No, I don't believe so. It's, um, whilst everyone has sovereignty issues, uh, we're not playing football here. What we have in common is the one brand, the CA designation, yeah. and a very much a similar business community that we're servicing, whether you're in public practice or whether you're in commerce or whether you're in, ac in academia. 
uh, or public sector is very, very similar. So it's the same set of rules. So I'm not a football fanatic, but to me, I think everyone seems to be on the one team at the moment. Yeah. The only thing I worry about, what I look forward to seeing is if, for example, the, the, the new institute decides to bounce the Kiwi government for a bad decision and the, and the Kiwi Prime Minister says, oh, it's been driven by those bloody Aussies. Yeah, I don't believe that's the case. We've, uh, both the Australian Institute and the New Zealand Institute have close relationships with government on this particular topic. And the feedback we're getting back from the various ministries is the fact that they are supporting what we're doing. Uh, they want, to t want us to take it to the membership and, and, and then at the moment, once we do that and once we get an answer from our members, I think they'll be fairly keen for us to look for a combination of the two, the two institutes in this region. Well, Tim, good luck with it, mate. Thank you, Peter. Appreciate it. So, with the local market tumbling over 100 points today, how have risks changed for equity investors? Joining me with his expert analysis is Rudy Philippek van Dyke, the editor of FN Arena. How are you, mate? I like the uh, the tone you, you take when you talk about FN. Oh arena. yeah, yeah, it's it's it's, 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 a, like it's a, a good name. It's like it's a, a movie, name. like a movie. Yeah, and, and, well, I, I think I'm trying to impersonate those those big uh, black uh, commentators in basketball. FN yes. Arena. Yes. Okay, let's get back to more important things. You, you think that uh, risk issues are, are well, changing? Well, well, here's the thing, Peter. Earlier in the week, I thought, oh, okay, let's let's talk about risks on uh, on, on Switzerland. Mm. And then today we have a 